Today's topic is going to be things you probably didn't know were in Photoshop. There's a hidden set of keyboard commands that allow you to visually adjust not only your brush size, but your brush hardness and softness. If you have a keyboard with bracket keys, get to the brush tool and I can use the bracket keys to make my brush bigger or smaller. For example, if I wanna use my content aware healing brush, but if I hold down the option or alt key and the control key and click and drag, when I drag left and right to make the brush bigger or smaller visually, and notice it's a super soft brush, if I drag up, or down, down makes it harder, up makes it softer. Number two is a window command for arranging your windows. Under the window menu, under arrange, you've got all these different options for tiling your windows. If I say two up horizontal, that will give me two documents up horizontal. If I say two up vertical, as you would expect, I get two up vertical. Whatever you choose, that's what it's gonna put your windows in. But you also have some different options here once they're tiled. You can match the zoom level so that they're all zoomed at the same level. Then when you're done playing with getting things side by side, you can go ahead and say consolidate to all tab. A lot of times you'll have a photo with some text in it and it has different fonts. I would love to type the word fabulous in something close to the Las Vegas fabulous. I type the word fabulous just in a generic myriad font. And you can see it here on its own type layer. I'm leave the type layer selected, but I'm gonna go to my rectangular marquee tool and I'm gonna just make a rectangular marquee around the word fabulous, but I'm still on the type layer. So that way I'll get to preview the different fonts it comes up with on the word that I type. Type menu, under type, you've got this thing called match font. When you come down to match font, that will start a search. And it then went through, number one, it went through all of your fonts, the ones you currently got loaded. And then it also went out to the cloud and went through the rest of the Adobe fonts. If there's one that you don't have loaded, just click the little cloud download icon and that will go ahead and activate it and show it to you. If I zoom in on her eyes, we can see that this image is pretty sharp. But just because an image is sharp and in focus, doesn't mean that it's as sharp as you want it to be in certain areas. And that tool is the sharpen tool. In the top options here, there's this check box that's checked by default. It's called protect detail. I'm gonna show you how bad it was first. If you went beyond that, this is what would happen. It would literally just start destroying your image after the second or third pass. And now we're gonna go ahead and turn on the protect detail. I'm gonna do maybe three passes. It looks like it's sharper, I can see it already. And then when you undo it, your image almost looks blurry compared to the amount of sharpening you just added. I might do the teeth. If the person is wearing any jewelry, bracelets, necklaces, earrings, all of that is just gonna make it look better. First of all, we're gonna create a new layer. Fill that new layer with black. Let's hit the letter X to toggle my foreground background color to black and white. And then I'm gonna hold down my option or alt key and hit delete, fill that layer with black. So the photograph is underneath that black layer. The reason you create a new layer is number one, it'll give you the flexibility to move around the effect that I'm about to show you. Number two, black is gonna let me do this filter because you have to do it, this particular filter can't be done on an empty layer. Filter menu, render, been there forever, the lens flare filter. First and foremost, you have four different lens types, 50 to 300 millimeter zoom, 35 millimeter prime, 105 millimeter prime, and the movie prime. Once you pick one, you can move it around. You're not seeing this on the image, you're not seeing it on the canvas, so you have to imagine what it's gonna look like from this window. You can also increase the brightness, click OK. That will put the lens flare on my black layer. I wanna see this lens flare on my subject. So by putting this lens flare on a black layer, all I gotta do is change the blend mode to screen. And that will screen out the black and just leave me with the lens flare. It's on its own layer, you can put it anywhere you want. You can do anything with it what you want. You can scale it down, scale it up. I hope you got something out of today. Cheers everyone.